from the Hart Center at Duluth Athletic Complex in Worcester, Massachusetts. Charter TV3 presents live coverage of NCAA basketball. Tonight, it's a Patriot League showdown as the Army Black Knights visit the Holy Cross Crusaders. It's college hoops on Charter TV3. Hello, everyone, and welcome down to the floor. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. Kevin, Holy Cross comes in a pretty young squad. They start four sophomores. Army comes in a very talented team, too, at six and four in the league. It's the second half of the league the league schedule for both of these teams. So these games just get more and more important each and every night. This is a big one tonight. Well, first of all, Holy Cross does hold serve here, so they have that in their favor. 34 to seven, they have the advantage coming here into the heart center. What's really important is people need to understand it's time to turn the corner. Teams are jockeying for position in the league, and it's important for Holy Cross to come out on top tonight. And I'm gonna tell you right now, call me a homer, but I think Holy Cross is gonna end up being the winner of this ball game tonight. We will see, it's certainly a tough test as Army is one of the top teams in the league. The Young Guns of Holy Cross taking on Army West Point. We're back with the opening tip off right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. I feel a little bit like the Muppet guy who lives in the, in the garbage can. It's been an issue for a long time in terms of just so, so much volume of traffic. Bypassing the canal district and the merchants in the canal district. Shame on you. For all these years, Kelly Square has actually worked. I don't want to waste more of my valuable time denigrating this idea that you're <laughs> coming up with. <laughs> Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A teenager is rescued in Westboro Monday after falling through an icy pond. A new federal program aims to help combat drug addiction. Mass State Police bomb squad responding to reports of a live explosive device. Significant snow is expected Saturday night into Sunday. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Welcome back, everyone, inside the Heart Center. Kevin Shea, Kevin Wells, as we get set for tonight's broadcast. And we look at the starting lineups for Army West Point. Jordan Fox, Tommy Funk, the point guard. Jacob Kessler, Matt Wilson, one of their leading scorers, and Alex King. And for Holy Cross, you got the sophomores, Caleb Green, Jacob Grandison, Grandison Austin Butler, and then the two seniors, Patrick Benson and Jahiva Floyd. Jahiva Floyd, one of the most complete players in the league. And Benson tops in the league in assist to turnover ratio. There's Bill Carmody, the head coach of the Holy Cross Crusaders. Holy Cross, we mentioned the young guns, four sophomores. Leading the way here generally, along with Floyd in scoring. Well, you know what? Uh, they're reaching the midway of their career, right? So they're yeah. young, but they're not that young anymore. They're not rookies. Uh, they're sophomores that uh, have done an outstanding job of contributing to this program. And now it's the opportunity is there for them to become the leaders moving forward. Huge game tonight for Holy Cross. You know, three and seven in the league. Many teams, Kevin, jockeying for position, as I said in the open, you know, at four and six, four and six, four and six. Holy Cross at three and seven. I believe only eight teams go into the playoffs in the Patriot League. Right now, Holy Cross is at number nine. So it's going to be imperative that they start to get the ball rolling here. They've got to start to score the basketball a little bit better and continue attacking the glass more effectively. And Holy Cross will come out starting with Caleb Green and Matt Zignorski 
as well. Zignorski a senior. Caleb Green a sophomore. Along with Jehovah Floyd. Jacob Grandison. Austin Butler. Grandison the leading scorer on this team. Floyd one of the tops in the league in a number of categories. Rebounding, block shots, field goal percentage, scoring as well. Holy Cross has been excellent with the assist to turnover ratio. Their one Achilles heel has been the rebound. Little give and go! Floyd attacking the basket for two. Uh, Holy Cross with a great start. Army was in a man-to-man -man defense and just a very strong move to the basket. Here Holy Cross comes out, extending their zone pressure, matching up. Army swings it around. They skip it over. Fox looked at it, goes inside. And good touch shown by Matt Wilson, the leading scorer for Army West Point. Well, again, great ball movement that time by Army, moving the ball from the outside to the inside on a slip. Good job by Green getting to the rim. Just would not drop. Caleb, one of those super sophomores, quick with, with the ball in his hands, couldn't get it to go off the glass and in. Now Holy Cross traps along the baseline. Army, good ball movement. Alex King's shot is off the mark. Austin Butler with a rebound. Here's Floyd. Holy Cross with their three guards set, Kevin, with Zagorski in the ball game here at 6-2. Floyd, third leading scorer on this team. He set a Holy Cross record for field goal percentage in his season last year. Our old friend Ernie Floyd used to hold the mark for years. Zignorski, and here come the Black Knights of Army West Point. Funk leads the team in assists. They swing it for a three, no good. Butler goes to the rebound, knocked around. Caleb Green has it. Green quickly brings it up court. Nice, nice transition defense by Army getting back that time. Holy Cross goes into their set offense. There's Austin Butler. Butler, the runner in the lane, rattles it home. Crusaders have a two point lead. Well, Austin Butler, about as tough as it gets for a young man here at Holy Cross. Nice job by Holy Cross tying it up. Butler involved there. Yeah, Butler ties up Jordan Fox. Butler was not going to let go of that basketball. Well, here's the handoff, and there's the dribble drive penetration. Great job taking it to the basket hard. And I like Austin Butler meeting toughness with toughness. He was not going to let go of that basketball even after the official blew the whistle. And Fox slipped on the floor, falls out of bounds. It'll be Holy Cross basketball. But that's one of the things, and it doesn't matter what sport, but coaches always talk about whenever you're playing one of the academies, one of the service academies, you have got to match their toughness because you know they're going to be tough. You know they're going to be physical. Well, both of these teams come into tonight's game, Kevin, averaging defensively, creating 14. Oh, oh. An offensive foul, foul great, on Floyd. Great job by Floyd getting to the basket. I thought he slipped under him a little late, but obviously I'm not officiating. That's the first on Floyd. Here we go. Uh, you make the call. Yeah, he was moving. Ball goes the other way. Ami will get the ball back. You know, you talked about uh, Austin and how aggressive, and uh, Austin Butler, how aggressive and strong he is. He just does a great job. Good entry pass to Wilson. Well, Matt Wilson has all four of Army's points, and we're knotted up at four apiece. Great job getting the ball inside again to Wilson. You know, Army being patient, dumping the ball into the paint. Nice cut and a beautiful feed from Floyd to Caleb Green, and Holy Cross regains the lead. Right now, Holy Cross doing a great job of matching Army's energy. Outstanding ball game early on here. The give and go working for Holy Cross, too, and the bounce pass, Kevin. You and I both talk about that, just how much more difficult that is to defend than the straight chest pass. Yeah, their defense is active, isn't it, Kevin? Well, they extend so, so well. They've just got to make sure they collapse. A little bit of penetration there. You know, and that can really hurt you because, again, as they collapse, they're able to dish the basketball. In that case, able to finish it through the lane and off the window. 
Tommy Funk with the bucket. We're tied up at six apiece. Underneath, Grandison. Jacob Grandison gets his two of the night, the leading scorer for Holy Cross. And now they call a blocking foul, and that's where the Holy Cross faithful will take umbrage with the officials saying you're going to call that a block. But down the other end, you call Floyd for well, the charge. Grandison on that last bucket, but it all started with Caleb Breen, Green getting it along the baseline and a nice little shovel flip pass into the lane and a great finish. 8-6, the Crusaders with the lead. Army trailing it by two with the ball. Here's a steal uh -huh. by Butler. It's Butler and Green. Butler wheels back. They'll set the offense. You know, again, Norski, Butler, and Green, the three guard set, as you said, Kevin. Yep. Holy Cross will look to run, but they're so disciplined. If they don't see an opportunity, they're going to pull it back out and go to their sets and try to execute and break you down. The reverse from Floyd, no good. And the rebound corralled by Matt Wilson, the junior from Alexandria, Kentucky. John Amezzi in the ball game for Army. And there's a steal by Zignorski and a foul on Army. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We will take it alongside Holy Cross in front of Army West Point. Eight, I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. And Holy Cross lost a dear friend of the basketball community in Central Mass. Lost a dear friend with the passing of Andy Laska this past weekend. Andy Laska in the bottom right was part of that 1947 NCAA championship team here at Holy Cross. Bob Cousy was his backcourt mate. Bob Cousy in the front row as well sitting down there. Bob Cousy is actually the only living member left of that 1947 championship team. And Andy Laska is a Worcester, was a Worcester kid. He went to North High School, went into the service after high school for three years, fought in World War II, came back, went to Holy Cross, was a great player for that team. That Holy Cross team played a lot of their games in the Boston Garden and they outdrew the Boston Celtics at that time. Andy Laska went on to coach and be the athletic director at Assumption College coached at Worcester Academy for a couple years, coached both Assumption and Worcester Academy in the same year, then turned over the Worcester Academy team to his friend D. Rowe, another great Worcester legend. Andy Laska will be missed as one of the just great people in the Worcester basketball community and in the Worcester community as well. So our thoughts and prayers with his family. A true gentleman and a Worcester icon. I believe Joe Early, too, was a part of that team. Joe Early's dad, Joe Early, the district attorney, was his father. Joe Early was a part of that championship team as well. Two seconds on the shot clock, and they didn't get it off in time. A great defensive stand for Holy Cross. You know, again, that's what... Uh, that's one of the things that Holy Cross and Army both do very well. Again, both averaging, creating over 14 turnovers a ball game. Holy Cross with a great defensive stop there. Holy Cross came in shooting 46% from the field average per game. They're at 57% right now. Turnover created by Army. 
They've shot the ball well, Holy Cross. The majority of the season, they've shot the ball very well. And they take care of the basketball very well. The one thing really that turned them statistically is the rebound. And another good defensive series from Holy Cross. Bill Carmody going into his bench. Kyle Copeland's in the ball game. Matt Faw's in the ball game. Copeland, another sophomore. Great job getting his hands into the passing lane, deflected it enough, and then it went off an Army player. Pat Benson's in the ball game as well. His parents, Holy Cross grads. His sister, a thousand point scorer in Harvard. He goes inside. Outside they go to Faw for three. Rebound, Army. Far, a 6'9 sophomore trying to show off a little bit of his range from 22 plus. Copeland is a sophomore as well in there for Holy Cross. So a very young squad as we mentioned. This is the team where the future is very bright, but obviously they want to win here in the present. Copeland with the rebound, and Benzin brings it up. Hands it off to Butler. Copeland gets it to Grandison on the wing. Grandison off the screen. Back to Faw. Faw for three. Off the back of the iron. Another rebound for Tommy Funk. Funk, a six-foot guard. Already has a handful of rebounds. And that time, Funk couldn't get it to go. Army gets the offensive rebound. A loose ball there on the rebound, recovered by Army. Grayson kept alive, another offensive rebound by Army, and that's what we were talking the about. The Achilles shoot, heel. Yeah, you're shooting well, but if the opponent gets two or three, and in this case, four cracks at it, that's what kills you. Well, it's just the number of shots. You know, you can shoot well and shoot a higher percentage field goal-wise, but if the other team takes 20 more shots than you do. Well, and in that case, they were able to escape without it. Austin Butler for three. Holy well, Cross with your largest lead of the ball game, a five-point advantage. You know, we talked about how tough Butler is. I know the last two trips down, other than this previous one, he was trying to post up at the high post because he definitely has a height advantage on the Army man-to-man -man matchup. Crusaders very active in their zone. An offensive foul. That time it was Faw who stepped in and took the charge. Holy Cross doing it on defense, and they're scoring on always well. They lead it by five. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up one nothing. Nezzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Well, Holy Cross doing a great job, 11 to six. Here's a good look at Austin Butler as he drops down the trifecta from deep. Austin lists at 6'5". We talked about his toughness. Here's an opportunity where he's showing us his range. Only a sophomore, a real good leader for this Crusader team, Kevin. Yeah, he is, and that's what, when you have, at times, four, five sophomores on the floor, you need that leadership from them. You can't, you know, you you can't look over and say, okay, we, who, it's us. Right. You I know, mean, and, and Jahiva Floyd has been a phenomenal leader here as a senior for him, but you're right. You're in the you're in the you're in the ball game. You're the one on the floor as a sophomore. You've got to step up and take that leadership role. Well the freshman it, Marlon Higgis is in the game too, not Holy Cross. Hargis rather. Army yep. just went with a shift change and brought in five new players. But when Matt with Matt Farr in the game, he comes in the ball game and he shoots two threes immediately, the 6'9 sophomore, you know, not hesitating at all. 
Butler with the turnover there. No, and one thing that this group has, and you need that, is they have confidence, and you know that as a as a former college coach. You know, if a, if a team and the squad doesn't have confidence, then it's tough. There's, it's, it's tough as a coach. What do you do? Holy Cross being out rebounded at this juncture, nine to four overall. Army with three offensive putbacks to Holy Cross is zero. And I think it could be even more than that. That last trip down, I think they had four offensive rebounds. Holy Cross, though, again, defensively doing a nice job of holding the fort. They lead it 11 to 6. 11 minutes even to play in the first. Here's the freshman. The jumper's no good from Hargis. The 6 7 freshman. From Mays Landing, New Jersey. And they really like their freshman class as well. I think they've got some real impact players in that freshman class. And, you know, Kevin, we talked about it at the open of the show, but this is the second half of the league season. It's the second time around for these teams. Army won the first meeting between these two. But, you know, as a coach, you know, maybe those, those freshmen, they're not freshmen anymore at this time of the season. So you might have even more confidence as a coaching staff even putting them in in different situations. Floyd! Goes up and throws it down. Jahiva Floyd with the hometown throwdown. Crusaders by seven. Well, Matt Wilson tried to get a sneaky steal there, and Jahiva was not going to have any part of that. Army answers with a three from Jordan Fox. Here comes Benzin. Butler. Stagger screen, nice job. Kyle Copeland, another one of those sophomores from Leesburg, Virginia. Copeland has his first two points of the ball game. Copeland did a nice job of running his man off of that double screen, a stagger type screen. Got himself open going in through the lane. Copeland played in 17 of Holy Cross's games this season, but that's another guy averaging 1.6 points a game. Obviously, the coaching staff getting more and more confident with him. We couldn't see the staggered screen, but there's a great cut and an outstanding finish. Kyle Copeland, you know, 6'4", another one of those super sophomores like you talked about, Kevin. I'll tell you, the future is very, very bright for this team. And again, I know they're playing to win right now. Well, and I know that that's coaches expectation is that these kids you know it's about playing and playing hard you're a starter you're a player you're getting quality minutes you got to give back and it starts on defense the three no good and Floyd with the rebound Floyd's going to be called for the foul a little push in the back Matt Wilson kind of got from Alexandria Kentucky as you said got pushed underneath by Floyd and that's the second personal foul on Jahiva Floyd Again, Floyd leads the team in rebounding. He's third in scoring. He does just about everything. 52 block shots this season for Jahiva Floyd. I mean, he is he is just outstanding. In addition to that, he leads the team in assists. So, I mean, when I talk about a complete player, he is Jahiva Floyd is that for Holy Cross as Alex King hits a three. And Army quickly gets back into the ball game with a couple threes. They trail it by three. Kevin mentioned so important you look at the league standings and who's going to make the postseason and then where are you going to be seated in the postseason do you have a home game do you go on the road a lot can happen when you're playing strictly league games from here on out turnover it will be Army basketball with 848 remaining Caleb Green, Green got it into the teeth of defense pivoted to throw the kick out just misread his teammate. Army trails it by three. They have consecutive threes now. Another one and they would tie this ball game up. Up top. Good active defense from Holy Cross. The shot clock is down oh. to five, and Grandison Great. with the steal. Great hustle. Grandison stepping through, 
Oh, he An offensive time. foul, and that will not make the Holy Cross coaching staff happy. Well, he tried to step around. Be interested to see that is, you know, the. All right, let's get a second look. You be the judge. Well, he tried to step around, and uh, obviously the referee didn't feel that uh, the defender had to move or did move. 15 12, the Crusaders. There's a three to tie it up. No good. Off the fingertips of Jordan Fox, who became a member of the 1,000 point scoring club this season. Got a timeout on the floor at 7.54 remaining. We'll take it alongside Holy Cross in front of Army West Point by three. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. People live, listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Sturbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We haven't, we met selectmen on this show that they want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. And here you go, Holy Cross and Army and the Crusaders. Well, sharing the basketball. Sharing the basketball, just doing a great job, a little montage here of how well Holy Cross, when they have hit their stride and they've been patient and executed their offense, they've done some great things early on here in the first half. Well, Pat Benzin leads the league in assist to turnover ratio. Holy Cross has a team has been very, very strong with assist to turnover ratio. We're going up north on Friday night up at Groton Dunstable. It is Westboro and Groton Dunstable. That should be a phenomenal matchup. Kevin, and that's that'll one of those, come your way at seven. That's one of those games where I have to get a hotel. That's true. <laughs> Such a drive. <laughs> Crusaders lead the league in assist to turnover ratio, and Army is second as a team. So two squads that do a nice job valuing the basketball. Matt Faw with a three, and the Crusaders' lead is six. Well, a big bucket there. One for three. You know, obviously he's got great confidence in his shooting ability. Six nine sophomore. Down low, Faw on the defensive end. Takes it away. Good defense from the Crusaders, who are shooting 50 over 50% from the field here in the first. Little pick and pop. Faw takes it off the bounce. Cut off at the pass. Here's a deep three from Austin Butler. Rebound Army. Army giving Holy Cross one crack at it. And that's been it. Army trying to move the ball quickly against this Holy Cross zone. They get it inside. And find the seam and Matt Wilson converts. Well, and that's exactly what happened. They reversed the ball from one wing all the way around to the side and then dumped it into the low post. Great ball movement by Army that time. Wilson averaging just under 14 points a game. The leading scorer for Army West Point. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Grandison the runner in the lane. And the rebound, Wilson. Pretty good look by Grandison, just couldn't get it to drop. 18-14, Crusaders. Amezi. Oh, got it. And an offensive foul. And it was Faw who stepped in and took the charge. Well, take a good look at it here. Coming right into your living room. Faw holds still outside of the circle. Great job. So that's the first charging call against 
the Black Knights tonight. Kevin, Holy Cross uh, has already gone 10 deep on their bench. Count the basket. And Grandison will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Take a look. Jacob Grandison, the sophomore from Oakland, California, gets hit as he takes it to the rack. Shooter's touch goes up around the iron and knocks it home. An 81% free throw shooter, Jacob Grandison, will have a chance for a three-point play and a chance to make this. You know, as you talk about free throw, game. Yep. free throw shooting, Kevin, both of these teams come in at just over 67% as teams from the free throw line. Or as Bob, my friend, would say, the charity stripe. You know, so certainly, if it comes down the stretch, it could be anyone's game. Seven-point advantage for Holy Cross. Again, Holy nice Cross. defense. Holy Cross extending. 21-14, 5.53 remaining. Holy Cross puts it in play. Patrick Benzin, one of the leaders of this squad from Wellesley, Massachusetts. Bringing it up for Holy Cross. Army thought they got a double dribble there, and we got a hold on Army. The foul will go on Aaron Duhart as he was matched up with Butler. That's the sixth team foul on Army. Holy Cross not shooting yet. So we'll go one and one. The next Army foul. Four team fouls on Holy Cross. Here's Benzin. Benzin, pull up jumper. In front of the iron. Faw kept it alive and went over the back. So Matt Faw will be whistled for his pers first personal foul, the fifth team on the Crusaders. 5.28 to play in the first. 21-14, Holy Cross in front. I like the fact that Farr is being aggressive inside the paint. You know, it's really important. We talked about the rebounding, and that goes at both ends of the uh, court. Ben's jumping out. Oh, he's so quick, isn't he? You know, yeah, Pat he really Benson. is. He's a smart player, too. He's a really smart player. He's just a, he's a leader. What a basketball family, too. Turnover. Well, great. this defense is playing great, aren't they, Kevin? Outstanding. Great first half for Holy Cross on the defensive end. And you played years ago for Jim Fredella, a, a guy that, you know, defense was the foundation. You know, offense was gravy, but it was all about defense. And, you know, this team right now is winning this game because of their defense. Offense absolutely was secondary in Jim Fredella's regime of basketball. Army gets the rebound. On the run, off the foot. Here's Huge the steal step. by Butler. Butler elevates, lays it up and in. Well, nice Holy. strong move by Austin Butler. Timeout, Army. Holy Cross up by nine. Largest lead of the ball game for the Crusaders. With 4.21 to play in the first half. Holy Cross with a 23-14 lead. And coming up in the half, Brenna Wilson sits down with Holy Cross softball coach Jen, L Jen Lempicki, Lepicki and Amanda Belichick, the Holy Cross women's lacrosse coach. It's been a pretty eventful couple days for Amanda Belichick. She was out at the Super Bowl. Her dad, of course, Bill Belichick, the head coach of the New England Patriots as they won their sixth Super Bowl title. National Women in Sports Day, celebrating that today with softball coach Jen Lepicki and the women's lacrosse coach, Amanda Belichick, sitting down with Brenna Wilson. Couple angles, Austin Butler, again, the 6'5 sophomore guard, quick, aggressive, strong, with a big steal there, takes it hard to the rack. Nine point advantage for Holy Cross. 4.21 to go, this is when you wanna keep your foot on the gas, Continue to play with tenacity on the defensive end. Exercise your patience on the offensive end. But they've got to continue to attack the glass and be effective at doing that. Get another one. This kid is great. He started out on fire. The crowd's behind him. Oh, just missing the three. What a run he had. Like the old uh, Pepsi hotshot. I remember growing up 
we had camps, you know, like just in different playgrounds. It was not camps, I should say, but it was like a playground. In, in Acton, you had different playgrounds you'd go. But they had a, a Pepsi hot shot thing, you know, during the summer. And so everyone would try out for it. And like the top kid in each age group in the camp, then there would be like an all camp battle, like all the camps in Acton. And then the top kid would move on to, to the States. But that's kind of what it was here. You'd have to hit a layup and then like an eight footer and, you know, they didn't have the three-point range. It was all spot range. shooting, I remember. Yeah, yeah, so I would always, I never was good at it, but I, I always looked forward to it. The Pepsi hot shot. Right now, Army out rebounding Holy Cross 15 to seven. Yeah, and they say four nothing on the offensive end. I think it's closer to six nothing or seven nothing on the offensive end. Uh, but if you look, Holy Cross hitting 48% from the field and they're holding Army to 35% shooting. But I think a real key, we talked about the tenacity of the Holy Cross defense. They have created 12 West Point turnovers. And this is a team in West Point that doesn't turn the ball over that often. They go inside, and Wilson converts. The 6'9 junior. Army has been effective. I mean, Wilson in particular, you know, inside the paint getting him the ball and finishing it. Benzin. And Grandison for three. Rebound collected by Fox. Great defense yeah. from behind. Grandison doing yeah. a nice job. He said, I'm going to get that back on this end. You talked about it, Kevin, when you mentioned desire. And that's so much of defense is desire and will. And that's what Grandison there, just a great job to get the arm in and to get the deflection and then get the steal. And if you're playing that kind of defense, you can, you know, not that a coach wants to see it, but you can go a few trips down the court without a field goal and not get hurt as much. Absolutely. Last time down, Matt Faw took his fourth three-pointer in the first half. And He'll a foul called foul. on Holy Cross. Let's see who they call it on. Faw got the block. Yeah. It is Faw. Oh, nice job rotating over from the weak side. You know, his hands went straight up, but his body came at the uh, the attack. Going to the basket by Jordan Fox. As you mentioned, Fox, a member of the 1,000-point scoring club. senior leaders for this team. Another young man from Kentucky. Jordan Fox. They do give you a typical day in the life of a cadet. Fox will give it to you, Jordan Fox. Wake up is at 6 a.m. and you're going straight till 11.30. Lights out at 11.30, but you're up at 6 a.m. Breakfast is at 6.15, formation is at 6.55. Great movement. Three's off the mark. Well, uh, just a great look that time. Holy Cross did a nice job and Faw, he can make that shot. One for five here in the first half, I believe. Holy Cross leads it by six. Army swinging it around. Fox inside the arc, no good. The rebound by Green. Green out of Londonderry, New Hampshire. Grandison swings it to Butler. Ball in there as well. Here's Caleb Green. Green draws the defense, bends it for three, no good. Ball went high for the rebound, got boxed out. Fox down the other end. Holy Cross doing a great job of getting back and getting right on the ball handle. Holy Cross is getting great looks, another turnover. Yeah, Faw got in there, deflected it, and Butler gets the steal. And we talk about this almost every broadcast, but it was a big point of emphasis for Ralph Willard and his teams when he coached here was deflections and they kept track of it. They kept track of it in practice. They kept track of it in games. 
And Holy Cross being really patient with their offense. Ball from the free throw line, no good. Dives after the rebound. Army comes up with it. Minute five to play in the first half. A low scoring affair. Holy Cross in front, 23 to 17. Here's the three. Green with the rebound. He and Grandison both went up for it. Good communication. Here's Green for three. And Holy Cross has gone cold from the field. I can't say that they're taking bad shots. They're pretty good looks. They're squaring up to the basket. They just can't get it to drop right now. Army West Point coach Jimmy Allen instructing his team to hold the ball for a little bit. 10 seconds on the shot clock, 25 on the game clock. They get a nice play underneath and a high percentage shot from Jacob Kessler who gets his first two of the ball game. Nice no look pass, it was penetration through the middle of the lane and then a slip along the baseline, no look pass. See if Holy Cross holds for the final shot of the first half. Seven seconds remaining in the half. And Benson sneaking through for two. Well, caught it at the last moment. He didn't think it was coming, but a great reaction by Benson. So we go to the break with Holy Cross in front 25 to 19. Bill Carmody's crew with a six point advantage. And Holy Cross will take that lead. As we mentioned, Brenna Wilson sat down recently with Jen Lempicki, the softball coach, and Amanda Belichick, the women's lacrosse coach. And we're gonna get to that after this timeout. Kevin and I will be back. After this. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it. Don't forward it. Think twice what you type. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat. Leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up one nothing. Nezalillo, far down. Oh, nice show. That's a sweet goal. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch at UMass Memorial Healthcare informs you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A teenager is rescued in Westboro Monday after falling through an icy pond. A new federal program aims to help combat drug addiction. Mass State Police bomb squad responding to reports of a live explosive device. Significant snow is expected Saturday night into Sunday. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. And welcome back, everyone, at the half. Holy Cross in front of Army West Point, 25 to 19. As we mentioned, Brenna Wilson recently sat down with Holy Cross softball coach Jen Lepicki and Holy Cross women's lacrosse coach Amanda Belichick as part of the celebration of National Women in Sports Day. Here's that interview now. Thanks, Kevin. Now, you know, today is National Girls and Women in Sports Day, and what better way to acknowledge that to be then to be joined by two coaches of women's programs here up on the hill. I'm joined by softball head coach Jen Lepicki and women's lacrosse head coach Amanda Belichick. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Now, you know, you both are, you have background in athletics. What kind of drew you to, you know, wanting to compete and, and join these sports programs? Jen, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think uh, first off with the competing part, I think as an athlete and you know, you kind of define the game that you love and what you're passionate about and you dive in, I think your competitive nature just kind of takes over. Um, I think with staying with it, I think anytime you can have a leadership role and help 
uh, inspire impact lives of young women. It's really exciting, and you get to kind of um, find their ways to compete and kind of push them into roles that are uh, hopefully prominent for them as they move forward as well. So um, certainly exciting to stay in college athletics. Yeah, and Amanda, for you. I mean, being in a team sport is just one of the most rewarding things, being able to compete with a group of women who are all trying to strive you know, for that same goal, to win, to be successful, um, tapping into building their confidence and just watching them be successful and being a leader of a program is so inspiring and, and just watching them do well is such a joy. So that's why I love coming to work. Yeah, and both of you were athletes first before becoming coaches. What are some challenges that you've seen? You know, you, you guys were part of the teams before, now you're leading the teams. And Amanda, we'll start with you. I mean, I think in any program, it's, it's resources and what you have. And I think one of the great things that has happened along the way, and there's been great trailblazers in women's lacrosse and sports in general for women of, um, you know, fighting for equal rights with men and, and getting those kind of resources, gear, um, travel, the, the things that you need to succeed and I think just being in, in a program that has that to, you know, we have what we need to be successful and I think that's just really exciting and um, happy to be part of it. Yeah, I think uh, similarly to, to kind of echo, I think as um, women in athletics, right, you're always looking to find ways of, of what can provide to continue to expand our sport, whether it's resources based or, or kind of whatever it might be. I think in our game too, right, it's how do we continue to gain national recognition to show how hard our women are working, what they're achieving, um, that they're competing in a level that is above and beyond, I think, maybe what might be expected. Um, and I can say for softball, that has certainly uh, expanded over the years and the excitement that goes around our game is growing, which is certainly um, well deserved for what our athletes are doing and what they're putting into it. So um, it's exciting to see where our game is going, especially with how hard our, our, our women are working. Um, and at a place like this, what's provided and the support that's provided to our female athletes is certainly incredible. You know, with the climate of sports today, you know, it's almost like that gap, the gender gap is kind of closed where girls are able to compete with guys. Do you think that there's just more opportunities now for girls, you know, to be seen as, you know, just as competitive or, you know, girls can be on little league teams or, you know, playing on a football team or golfing together, you know? Um, do you think that there's just more opportunities or do you think there really has been, you know, more of a, okay, girls, girls can compete too? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I think there's certainly a ton of opportunities that I've provided. Um, I think recognition that's provided for women is certainly increasing. The support um, that's provided for them is increasing as well. Uh, and I think on top of that, I think now um, it's understood that women can compete, right? It's part of who we are. It's something we should be respected for. Um, and I think it makes young women and young girls excited to be a part of games, and they want to be a part of any sport that they're interested in. And I think that opportunity is there for them now. Um, I think the support's growing for them in that field as well. I think there's so many talented female athletes out there and being able to compete on big stages you see softball across on national television now which I think is just it's so empowering to be able to watch highlights um, I was watching sports centers seeing like top 10 you know plays from college women's games and um, it's like those kinds of things I think are just so awesome to just be able to have that recognition and um, you know whether it's you or just another female in your sport I think that's so exciting for everyone when those moments happen and so it's just more and more frequently which I think is incredible. Now, both of you are coaches in spring sports up here in the Northeast and <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get for weather like this the last few days are if, or any indication we went from negatives to 60s so you have no idea but um, Jen you have the added benefit of being able to go down south mm -hmm. to kind of train and get ready and how do you think that helps prepare your girls? Oh, I think it's an incredible opportunity. I think it's the, the resources that we're providing and the ability that we're able to do that um, certainly prepares us for conference and for the remainder of season as well. Um, I think on top of that, the facilities that we have here allow us to continue in stride from the, when our, our women get back in the fall all the way through. So um, certainly going south is fantastic. Certainly have the resources here as well to continue working really, really hard. Now, Amanda, lacrosse, you kind of play through everything. Um, yeah. So you kind of <laughs> open up this weekend. So who knows what we'll get for weather for that. But do you think that playing in that kind of weather helps, you know, create that toughness too throughout the season. I mean, I think you just got to be able to deal with adversity and whatever comes your way. So whether it's weather or, you know, it's an injury or, I mean, there's any, you, you don't know, it's sports. That's why we play the game, right? You just don't know what's going to happen. Um, so being able to deal with adversity in all as aspects is part of, the, part of the process, part of the game. But um, I agree with what Jen said. We're really fortunate up here at Holy Cross to have our indoor facility and um, you know we plow our fields we get outside as much as we can so it's we're really lucky here now recruiting wise is it tough to recruit to the northeast for for these games or you know do the facilities help you know kind of 
seal the deal for you guys too. Yeah, so I think a lot of things really help us. One, the facilities, absolutely. I think athletes come here and they see um, the facility and where they're able to train and what they're going to be able to do. Um, but I think on top of that is the whole experience here, right? So um, it's not only about getting athletes to buy into the athletic piece, but it's getting them um, to see what down campus is like as well, right? What kind of academics do we provide? What outside experiences do they also have here? Um, so I think really for us, we're fortunate. We have a lot that we can offer and it allows us to draw um, not only athletes from this area, but from all over the country to us as well. It's really a complete student athlete experience at Holy Cross and academics is such an important part of being at Holy Cross and that's one of the great things that draws such wonderful student athletes to our program. So we're really fortunate to be able to recruit to a great institution and having great facilities and a great athletic department behind us makes the job pretty easy. And both of you have a couple seasons under your belt now. So what are you what are you seeing now? What are you what are you seeing from the programs and the, the athletes coming in, you know, it's is, is it kind of getting easier now, now that you're kind of used to the programs? <laughs> you know, I think every year you have challenges and, and, yeah. you, and you go to work every year. What I will say is, um, you know, going here and being here for a few years, you start to find that your athletes start falling um, into the culture much easier, right? So that competitive piece that you've been working for, um, what they expect of themselves, the standards that they have and what we've set um, are just a part of who our athletes are now. Um, so we come here and we go to work every single day and we have goals in mind and we have missions in mind. Um, and now those athletes that are coming in are built into that same mission and our returners um, are really working hard to lead us in the right path. We spent a lot of time the past couple of years focusing on team culture, standards, expectations, and um, you know our student athletes are really proud of our program and proud of the direction we're going. So we're really excited about what's in front of us. Now, your season starts up this weekend. Yeah. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking forward to this season? What are some, some things you guys are wanting to do? We have a great veteran team this year, so we have a lot of leaders returning on all, you know, in all phases of the game. So I think we're really looking forward to that, seeing what that experience brings to the field. Um, you know, I think it'll be a, a little bit of a journey. We also have a lot of freshmen, so looking forward to seeing how and where they step up and come in. So trying to blend that all together, it'll, it'll be exciting, but we had a huge year last year getting to the Patriot League, um, had a great game against Lehigh in the quarterfinals, so really looking to build and capitalize on that experience and use it as motivation moving forward. We have a little bit of time, but um, what, for you, what are you guys looking forward to for this season? Yeah, I think it's the ability to just go out and compete, right? So I think you spend um, the last, you know, X amount of months really training not only the physical side, but the emotional side of your game and the mental side of your games. Um, and when you see the hard work that they're putting in, there's a time where you just need to go out in the field and you need yeah. to let it go and you need to compete, right? And you can talk about it and we create settings for it, but there's nothing like in-game situations. Um, so just letting that happen for them, letting them see their hard work and how that pays off. Um, also continue to see, okay, what areas do we need to continue to work on and improve and grow in? Um, so it's exciting. You have to get out in the field and put all the pieces together and to kind of see how you flow and function um, when you start getting to end season. Now finally, um, what is one piece of advice that you have for girls looking to get in, into athletics? Whether it's competing or being a coach or whatever. Uh, what I would say is I think the ability um, to understand how hard you have to work. I, and I think that's across the board, no matter what you want to do in athletics. Uh, work really hard, understand that there's no limits to what you can do and what you can achieve if you put the work in on it. Um, the opportunities are there. A lot of women um, before us have paved the way for us to be successful in sports, and it's our job to continue to carry on that legacy uh, and hopefully pave um, a way for the athletes that are coming behind us as well. I mean, I just think doing what you love is so important, finding that passion and, um, you know, being excited about going to practice every day and those opportunities to work hard. You have to love it. You have to do it. Um, but, you know, I think also playing lots of different sports and, you know, early on, one of the things that's changing in our culture right now is, you know, young people focusing on one sport. And I think we all as professionals see how valuable it is to have experiences in lots of different sports, but enjoy competing, enjoy the opportunity to go out and just play. And I think that's something that sometimes in the big picture, we focus on recruiting or how are we going to get to that next level? Just be a kid, play sports and find something that you love. And whether it's sports or arts or anything, you know, if you love what you do, you'll be successful, but you got to have passion. Thank you guys so much. Good luck on your seasons Thank you. coming Thank up. Thank you. Um, that, this is Amanda and Jen. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll have much more of the game after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr. And I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. 
Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it, don't forward it, think twice what you type. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up one nothing. Nezzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch and UMass Memorial Healthcare informs you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A teenager is rescued in Westboro Monday after falling through an icy pond. A new federal program aims to help combat drug addiction. Mass State Police Bomb Squad responding to reports of a live explosive device. Significant snow is expected Saturday night into Sunday. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Well, it's been an interesting first half, Mr. Shea. Look at Army moving the basketball. We talked about how well they sheared the ball. They hit a couple on the outside. They got the ball on the inside. They were able to kind of complete the game. But I can tell you, neither team torched the Nets in the first half. Good look at the Crusaders here. Their defense was their best offense. They did an outstanding job, which led to a lot of these baskets. They made the Army defense collapse throughout the entire first half. They were able to kick it out, dribble drive through the lane, and get it inside the paint with some great finishes. All right, the second half is underway. Holy Cross with the ball and the lead, up by six. And Grandison just tenacity underneath, staying with it. Well, Grandison wound up. I think he was high five in the bench. His arm was so far out, he was going to you know, flush that down. Good start for the Crusaders. Grandison had five points in the first half for Holy Cross, second leading scorer on the team. Butler had seven to lead the squad. A deep three from Jordan Fox. Fox uh, has eight points. Goes to show you why he's a thousand point scorer. Plenty of range there, he's got great form. She so knocks that down. Fox had four points in the first half. Jahiva Floyd has it knocked away. Oh. Great team defense that time by Ami on Floyd. Oh, could have been a travel. And the ball still loose. And Army comes away with it. Funk. You know, again, a couple takes in the first half. One was that Army did a great job on the glass. They had 21 rebounds to Holy Cross's nine. And we knew coming in that was an Achilles heel for Holy Cross. And Fox. Well, two quick Another threes. three, yeah, two quick threes from Fox. All of a sudden, it is a two-point ball game. 27-25, Holy Cross in front. Well, you know, I probably said neither team torched the Nets, and that might have jinxed us a little bit. But I think both teams have to throw at the first half. It's spent 20 minutes here. It's a brand new ball game. And it will be Army basketball. Here's your halftime statistics, Holy Cross shooting. At 39% from the field, Army at 38%. And the rebound advantage big in favor of the Black Knights, 21 to nine. The turnovers credit Holy Cross's defense. 14 turnovers for Army, only five for Holy Cross. So Holy Cross value in the basketball, creating turnovers. And that really negated the big rebounding advantage for the Black Knights. Foul underneath. Well, nice job by Army being patient, dumping the ball inside. Again, the big stud inside, Wilson. Tough once he gets the ball inside the paint to stop.
opening minutes of the second half. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. We thank you for tuning in to Holy Cross Men's Basketball, live from the Hart Center in the Luth Athletic Complex on the campus of Holy Cross. Caleb Green. Jahiva Floyd, who stands fifth in the country right now in field goal percentage. Green shovels it to Floyd. Green through the defense, pull up jumper. No good, Fox the rebound. Army will run, they trail it by one. A chance for the Black Knights to take the lead. And the three's no good. It's kept alive and Zignorski Pulls it away from two Army players. Well, great hustle that time by Zignorski. No one touched it going through. It'll be Army basketball. Jake Branderson taking a backdoor cut there. Matt Zignorski, Sparta, New Jersey. He's played in 12 games this year for Holy Cross. Hasn't seen a ton of time. Here's Army. Holy Cross looks like they came out in the 1-3-1 set. That's their bread and butter. When they made that great run to the NCAA tournament, won a game in the big dance in Bill Carpenter's first year here, it was that 1-3-1 defense that threw teams off, and the way they played it was so suffocating. That's what led them to that great run in the Patriot League playoffs and capturing the league title and going to the big dance. Butler on the run. No good, there's a lid on the basket right now. What Holy I like Cross. about the way Army is attacking this 1-3-1 is they put Wilson along the baseline. Low post short corner with his back to the baseline. And then they run a slip from the high post if they get the ball into him. And Tommy Funk will go to the line and shoot three. The foul is on Caleb Green. First on Green, Bill Carmody talking to Caleb Green. And Bill Carmody, the school, uh, and Coach Carmody announcing recently that he'll miss select road games for the remainder of the season to stay with his wife, Barbara, while she undergoes cancer treatment. So obviously, Coach Carmody, you talk about great pressure and, and worry, but uh, he certainly got that. And, and our prayers are with he and his wife, as I know the entire Holy Cross communities are. Tommy Funk with three free throws. He's tied the ball game up. It, or actually giving Army the lead, rather. He tied it up, and then he gave Army the lead, and he's got one more right now to give the Black Knights a two-point advantage if he hits it. Jahiva Floyd checks in for Matt Faw. Floyd at 6'8", 240, gives Holy Cross a physical presence, their biggest player. And so Funk hits all three, and the Black Knights now have a two-point advantage. Remember, they trailed by six at the half. Knocked away, Floyd gets it back. Green up top, he's got Grandison with him. Nice job Butler by Grandison Green. lost his shoe, and then put it back on mid-play. Great talent. Green shot is off the mark, and the rebound by Fox. Fox quickly pushes it up the court. Amezi, they swing it around to Funk. Inside, just trying to find some seams, trying to find a little shooting space, and Holy Cross's defense won't give it to him right now. Shovel pass, and Floyd throws it back. Oh, great weak side help. Floyd came from nowhere and knocked that away. Holy Cross looks to capitalize down the other end. Grandison for three. Rattles home, and the Crusaders have a one-point advantage. Well, Grandison with a great shot from the top of the key. It went down once, came back out, and then finally fell through. Ten points for Jacob Grandison. A one-point advantage for Holy Cross. This would be a big win for the Crusaders. Still a long way to go, obviously. Well, like we talked about, it's a 20-minute ball game right now. Here's Green on the run. One on one, Green pull up jumper. No good. Floyd kept it alive and couldn't collect it. 
off of Holy Cross. It'll be Army basketball when we return. We'll take a timeout from the Heart Center. You are watching exclusive coverage of Holy Cross on Charter TV3. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Well, Army came out right away. They were shooting the basketball really well, Kevin. They went from a six-point deficit to take the lead. Now Holy Cross on that jump shot right there is taking the lead back. So we've got a battle going on here. Both teams trying to stay to their strengths. Army attacking the glass, but they are shooting the basketball better. Holy Cross, the tenacity of the defense are doing an outstanding job continuing here in the second half. A key for Holy Cross, Kevin, is they're going to have to be more effective rebounding, one and done for West Point, and then they're going to have to score the ball at a higher shooting percentage. There's Jehovah Floyd. He and the Crusaders with a one-point advantage here. It has been a tight contest so far. Floyd with four points. A big block in this half, too. They don't list him with a rebound. He's the leading rebounder on this team. Holy Cross with four players who average in double figures scoring the season. The balanced attack for the Crusaders. And the three from Fox, and Army has regained the lead. Well, Fox, you know, again, real cerebral basketball player. Does a great job of ball faking the reversal, trying to get the defense to react to it, and then he pulls it back and knocks down that trifecta. Fox was one for four from three-point range for four points in the first half. He certainly changed that around with three threes here in the second half. Army comes away with it. Wilson got a hand on it. It's got to be more, more white jerseys on the offensive glass. A Army lot of green. A, Army with a two-point lead. Here's Fox for three. He's feeling it from beyond the arc. And last touch by Butler. It will be Army basketball. Jimmy Allen in his third season coaching the Black Knights. He goes to his bench, and there's Patrick Benzin, one of the leaders of this Holy Cross squad. Alex King in the ball game for Army. The 6'8 sophomore from Columbus, Indiana. Butler trying to run it down. Butler shows tremendous tenacity. You talk to folks that watch this team oh. play, and they love watching Austin Butler and his demeanor on the court. He's in for a street fight. He's in for a two-hour street fight each and every game. You know, you, you haven't used it much in the last couple of years, but a lunch yeah, pail type right. guy, you he's know? It. I mean, he definitely is. He comes to work every day with his lunch, and he's going to grind it out from the time it tips until the time the buzzer sounds. Here's Floyd on the block. Floyd puts it to the floor. Beautiful pass down low. And the finish from Kyle Copeland. Well, Floyd took the ball from the low post into the middle of the court. Uh, I'm sorry, into the middle of the key. And a great backdoor cut. And an outstanding pass by Floyd for the finish. He leads the team in assists, the big man. And that's a beauty right there to tie the ball game Another up to 32. A Holy Cross with numbers. Another turnover. Butler on the run. The Crusaders have a two-point advantage. Beautiful fast break from Holy Cross and the finish from Butler. Well, again, the defense is making it happen right now. They extend that 1-3-1. One, one. 
Turnover again. Butler got his hand on it. Maybe his leg. And Grandison comes away with it. Grandison tried to go inside. Army steals it back. Caldwell taking it to the rack. Count the basket. And Josh Caldwell with the chance for a three-point play. We're tied at 34 all now. Well, good look at it here. He takes it hard to the basket. You know, if you're going to foul, you got to get your money's worth. You know, there was some contact, and he kept fading. Good, strong move. 34-34. Freshman, Josh Caldwell. Trying to complete the three-point play and give Army the lead. He does so. One-point advantage. Army West Point, 35-34. Benson hands off to Butler. They look inside. Holy Cross going around the arc and in. Butler working on the freshman. Benson off the screen. Butler for three. Drains it. Holy Cross has regained the lead. Back and forth we go. Austin Butler with ice in his veins and a big triple. Well, a great pull up that time. Benson with the great timing on that pass. Down the other end, a big offensive rebound for Army. Caldwell missed the three, but got his own rebound. A second shot at it. And a good job by the Crusaders. Again, Holy Cross had two looks that time down. I mean, I'm sorry, Army had two. Holy Cross is going to have to really lock that down. Boyd is fouled before the they shot. Call it on the floor. Timeout on the floor. When we come back, it'll be Holy Cross basketball, the Crusaders for the two-point advantage. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up one nothing. Nezzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Well, Kevin, take a look. Holy Cross doing an awful lot of nice things. Backdoor cut. Floyd with a great bounce pass. Here's a big steal. Holy Cross is just starting to operate on four cylinders. Austin with the finish there. And now knocking down the three. Big bucket squared up, like you said. Ice in his veins. Knocks it down 37-35. The Crusaders. Holy Cross basketball on Charter TV3 is brought to you by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. The law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Proud to sponsor Holy Cross basketball on Charter TV3. Crusaders with a two-point lead. In the ball coming out of the break. So these are two teams that do not score a ton of points. And this is a low-scoring affair, even by their standards. Up top. Here's Grandison. Grandison has his shot blocked. Butler comes down with it. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Floyd taking it strong to the rack. The left-hander off the iron. Last touch by Holy Cross. And it will be Army ball. Grandison and Floyd battling for the rebound. Crusaders in front by two. Fox has been deadly from beyond the arc for Army here in the second half in particular. Funk leads the team in assists. He's the quarterback of the offense. Funk with Butler on him. Holy Cross matching up right now. They go inside to Wilson with one on the shot clock. 
Butler the rebound. Nice job by Floyd, staying home, hands high. He held his position, Holy Cross gets it back. Wilson currently is the all-time career leader in Patriot League history in field goal percentage. Still some games to go, but that's pretty impressive. And the sophomore, no good, Copeland from three. The oh. freshman, rather. Benson almost got his hand on it to knock, to uh, get a steal there, coming from the backside. Army with a chance to tie it or take the lead with a three. Wilson trapped along the baseline. Kicks it back up to Fox. Fox goes around the back. Fox has his shot blocked by Copeland. The Out sophomore Copeland with the big defensive stand. Outstanding defense by the Crusaders. Down the other end, the three from Grandison is in and out. Ten minutes to play in the ball game. 37-35, Holy Cross in front. Wilson going up strong, blocked by Floyd. Wilson gets it back, and Butler ties him up. Well, Austin Butler, you know, he the big man, Wilson brought it down low. Butler just stuck his nose in there and got his hands on it. Again, great collapsing defense by the Crusaders. How about Floyd? He is just oh. so sensational at blocking shots. Yeah, again, collapsing. And then Butler, here he is coming in, tying it up. The human eraser, Jehovah Floyd. Oh, nice pass. Army going, oh, and Floyd oh. throws it back. Not in my house, says Jehovah Floyd. A huge swat. Boy, I'll tell you, what a statement that play was right there. Floyd, what a great job. The Minister of Defense, Jehiva Floyd. Another huge rejection. And Floyd converts on the offensive end as well. A four-point Holy Cross lead. Well, great job by Floyd. Power dribble to his strong side. A nice left-handed finish. Army looking to answer. They trail it by four. The three comes up short. The rebound by Hargis. Austin Butler ended up in the uh, Army bench that time to play in defense. Speaking of Austin Butler, there he goes down Main Street. Timeout Army. Straight through the heart of the defense. The Crusaders lead it by six. We're coming back with more right after this. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two-vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. The new Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. People listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Stirbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We haven't. We got selectmen on this show that they want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. Welcome back, everyone. And Friday night, we will have a good one in high school boys basketball. Groton Dunstable and Westboro. We will be coming to you live from Groton Dunstable. And it should be a dandy of a basketball game. That's a key matchup, and it's a great game. Westboro uh, playing well, and uh, Coach Gillette has got the Crusaders of Groton Dunstable off and running. So it'll be a great high school matchup. Talking things over, Army West Point as they try to get back in this ball game, trailing it by six. That's well, they trailed at the half by. Yep, Holy Cross has done a great job of uh, hanging tough, coming and playing from behind, regaining and recapturing the lead. You know, they're playing with great confidence right now. Their defense has got to continue to carry them, but they've got to do a better job of only holding Army to one rebound on the offensive end, just like that. Yep. Right on cue, Matt Fall with the rebound. Here's Green, off the screen, back to Fall. 
Faw spins along the baseline. Tell you what, Faw is young, but the pick and pop with him at 6'9", he can really stroke it when he gets going. Copeland, and it's deflected oh. but picked up by Green. Five on the shot clock, the three off the front of the iron. And uh, the foul will go on Holy Cross. I think Copeland. battling for the rebound. It is. Copeland yeah. picks up his second. The sophomore has four points tonight. Eight ten to play in the ball game. The Crusaders of Holy Cross in front, forty-one thirty-five. Uh, Wilson really calling for the ball. What a block! Butler, Austin Butler getting up and throwing one into the seats. The Butler did it, Kevin. We'll take a timeout and be back with more from the Heart Center right after these messages. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Well, Mr. Shea, here we are at the Hot Center with a little bit of a block party going on. Call it the SWAT team, call it the block party, but the defense of Holy Cross has been doing an outstanding job. We just saw Austin Butler knock one into the stands along the baseline on a jump shot. Holy Cross's defense is giving them and holding them at a six point advantage right now. I like, I like the block party. The Holy Cross athletic community and the hockey community in particular mourning the loss of Lance Brady, the former Holy Cross player here, who just passed away. He's a 1993 graduate of Holy Cross, an outstanding hockey player who played professionally in the AHL and the ECHL as well after graduating. He was the Assumption College hockey coach for 10 years. And I know that the Holy Cross hockey community and the Assumption hockey community too are Really feeling the loss here of Lance Brady, a, a gentle giant, and we want to send our thoughts and prayers out to his family tonight, as well as all of his friends. We did the Holy Cross hockey game here on Friday, and Mike McGuire didn't play with Lance, but knew him and came in just after him and said that uh, everyone was really shaken up. Green goes strong to the hoop. Well, Caleb Dream, Green rather, doing a nice job, taking it to the basket, Fending off the defender and laying it in with his right hand. A one-handed move. A turnover. Here comes Green. They have numbers. Holy Cross. Green goes strong to the rack for two. Caleb Green's got six points. Holy Cross has an eight-point advantage. Two big buckets. Buckets, rather, by the sophomore, Green. Six fifty to play in the ballgame. Another block from Butler. Austin Butler, same spot, same result. He gets out on the shooter in the corner and gets another big rejection. Very important in Holy Cross X. Fouls on Tommy Funk. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Very important for this trip that Holy Cross is patient and executes with solid screens. They're doing a great job on offense. They've got to continue that. Bill Carmody, former coach at Princeton University and Northwestern as well. What a magical run he led Holy Cross on 
in his first season here with the Crusaders. And here's a steal from Army. Fox, great hustle. Oh, Butler job. getting back, Floyd getting back, and they knock the pass out of bounds. Tough turnover that time for Holy Cross. Up top, Funk. Funk looking for some space. Nothing there. Here's Fox for three. In and out, Butler with a rebound. Here comes Green. I'll tell you, Kevin, the later in the game we get, the more tired kids are supposed to be. But Austin Butler is really rising to the occasion right now for the Crusaders. Here's Floyd along the baseline. Floyd. Pimmons goes up strong for two. Well, I'll tell you what a great job getting himself into the low post. A nice step through power move off the window. 10 point lead for Holy Cross. And Floyd with the rebound gets undercut, knocked out of bounds. It's going to be. And the officials are saying it's Army basketball. Floyd looked like he got. Uh, Floyd has got blood Floyd looked all like over he got his... undercut. He's bleeding, so he's going to have to come to the bench. Let's see. I don't know if it's is it his blood or is it someone else. He's looking. Look saying, at, everyone's where looking to see where it's coming from. They're gonna, he's going to have to change a jersey, though, I think, or they'll have to wipe the blood. Well, they'll try to get it out, I think, with jersey. alcohol. Yeah. But it is going to be Army ball. So Benzik Floyd coming into the ball. Rebound. Looked like he got Holy, a little undercut. Holy Cross going really small right now. Well, Here comes Foss. Check that. Yeah, Foss coming up. Now they're sending it back out. Floyd's going to get a new shirt. He just ran to the dressing room to get a new shirt, so they certainly need Jehovah Floyd out there. Leads the team in so many categories. Now it's a big trip right here defensively for the Crusaders. Wilson down low. Wilson blocked by Faw. Here ben comes Benson. Once again, the Crusaders rising to the occasion. Every time the bell is rung, they're answering the door. That is, that's a huge defensive series right there for Holy Cross. So many block shots in this game. Clayton Lassonde for three, no good. Faw wow. just takes it away. Granderson's three, no good. And last touch by Army, it will be Holy Cross basketball. Well, Holy Cross catches a break there. I don't think that's the shot that Coach Carmody wanted. But again, they're up 10. They need to exercise use of the clock. And here comes Jehiva Floyd back in the ball game with a new shirt. And you said a fresh 30 seconds on the shot clock for the Crusaders, a 10-point advantage with 5.08 remaining. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells, thank you for tuning in tonight for Holy Cross basketball. Grandison, good up fake, 12-point Holy Cross lead. Now they've got to, they've got to dig in right now. 12 points for Grandison. Almost stolen. Great defense. Army swings it around. Looking for a shot. The three rattles home for Jordan Fox. That's a big three for Fox. Well, he's as solid as they get. You talk about ice in your veins. You know, he's a veteran that uh, shoots the basketball very, very well. Nice job by Holy Cross being patient. Butler looked at the three, comes off a screen. Butler, fadeaway jumper. Off the back of the iron, Floyd keeps it alive. Still loose. Army comes up with it. Here comes Funk. Oh, he traveled. Holy Cross basketball on Chartered TV3 is brought to you by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Joseph J. Cariglia, proud to support Holy Cross basketball on Chartered TV3. They call that a two-shot foul. 
That's why we're commentators, Mr. Shea. That's why we're commentators. Yep, you're right. And I will hold my comments right now. Tommy Funk shooting two. Austin Butler talking to one of the officials saying, all right, well, this is what I did here. Right. 4.05 to play in the ball game. Eight point Holy Cross lead. Make it seven. He's got a timeout on the floor. Holy Cross leads it by seven. 3.54 to play. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. Holy Cross in front, 49-42 with 3.54 to play in the ball game. Holy Cross 3-7 in league play coming into tonight's game. And Army coming in with a 6-4 mark. Army one of the two teams to beat Bucknell, who is the top team in the league right now, with an 8-2 mark. Well, we just saw an incredible performance of baton twirling, and it reminded me, because I'm an old man, <laughs> Calvin Murphy, if you look on YouTube, Calvin Murphy was a outstanding baton twirler. I didn't know that. The old Houston Rocket, Calvin Absolutely, Murphy. Absolutely, from the NBA. Wow. Was not only a great basketball player, but uh, could really twirl a baton. Well, right now, right now for Holy Cross, Butler leads the squad with 14 points. Grandison's got 12, and Floyd has eight for Army. Fox has 18, and Funk has seven. Wilson has nine. There's Floyd, count it! Jahiva Floyd going to the line with a chance for a three-point play. He's in double figures with 10 points. Well, I'll tell you what, for those forwards at home watching this ball game, watch the step through. He imposed his will, there's the step through, went to a strong hand, used his body to protect the basketball, and just powered the basketball up and over and in. Great move. 48 to play. Holy Cross with a nine point advantage. Big offensive series. We've seen how well Army can shoot the basketball. It's imperative that Holy Cross continues with their mainstay and that is to defend. And Grandison with a big rebound. So again, it's a one and done trip. Now Holy Cross can enjoy the ball a little bit. 325 to play in the game. Crusaders with a nine point advantage. Kevin and I have talked a lot about the league standings, how important it is. You've got to be in the top eight. Being in top eight is one. A key is, when we talked in the open about turning the corner, you want to be playing your best basketball this time of the year. When is it going to start? Well, maybe it's starting tonight. Army with the rebound. Funk brings it up. Funk. Backs his man down. Good up fake. The jumper from King, long rebound. Butler corrals it, hands it off to Green. Holy Cross will slow it down. And enjoy the shot clock and the game clock a little bit. 2.38 to play in the game. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Floyd on the block, skips it through. Green for three, nothing but net. Caleb Green. Well, I'll tell you, that was a huge, huge basket by the sophomore, Caleb Green, but again, a great pass by Jahave Floyd, and we got a block going the other way, Crusaders. Double-digit lead for the Crusaders, a 12-point advantage. 
Floyd with yet another rejection. 12-point advantage. Two minutes to play in the ball game. Butler looks inside. Army tightening things up defensively. That's why the screens are so important right now, body to body. Zignorski, a little leaner, wouldn't go. Holy Cross, 12-point lead. You don't want to give up a quick shot, and a block is the call on Matt Zignorski. And the crowd behind us does not like the call. Zignorski called for the block. Well, I have to agree, agree with the officials. Uh, I think he was moving at the time. So I would say that that was a good call. 141 to play in the ball game. 12 point advantage for Holy Cross. It is the 16 foul on the Crusaders. Army with only 14 fouls this half. Here's Fox for three. Rebound deflected out by Army and corralled by the Black Knights. Knocked away by Green and off of Army. It'll be Holy Cross ball with a minute 32 to play and a 12 point advantage. Holy Cross can take this game clock down close to a minute. Well, there's the defense and again, the same young man that knocks down the corner jumper, Caleb Green doing a great job of being active with his hands, knocks the ball away, Holy Cross gets it back. I love this set, one four out of bounds, the length of the floor. So many things you can do from this, and it forces the defense to match up. No one can really float. Again, the rest of the ball game, it's going to be so critical and crucial for Holy Cross to set solid screens and then open up after they set those screens. They've got to come to the basketball. You know, as a youngster, you're always teaching the kids step to receive, step to pass. Very important right now. Here's Benzin trapped along the baseline. Off of an Army defender and out of bounds. That'll be the fifth foul against Army. They're just going to keep coming with the heat right now. They've got one more to waste. The second foul from this point forward will put Holy Cross in a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Grandison. Grandison skips it over to Butler. Butler Spread goes the floor. back to Green. Holy Cross needs to get it above. Across the timeline. 10 second violation. And they didn't do it. Oh, it's. Yep, 10, 10, second. 10 second violation. 10 second violation. Jahima Floyd's going to check back into the ballgame. Both teams now making substitutions on each possession. Army puts in their offensive crew. Holy Cross will take one of their guards out. 119 to play, Holy Cross in front by 12, 54-42. Army looking to get a shot off quickly, Holy Cross defending well. Floyd gets the rebound. Crusaders get it up to Butler, Butler into the corner, peels back. Runs Gotta through move the, the ball, move the ball. Green. Holy Army just flowing to the basketball. Here's Grandison. Grandison knocked out of bounds. It'll be. Uh, he'll shoot two. Yep, he's fouled. Nice. Grandison with 12 points will be at the line to shoot a pair. Nice job by Holy Cross moving the basketball. With 50 seconds to play in the game and a 12 point Holy Cross lead. Grandison hits the first. Oh, well, big bucket. That's a big free throw, 13 yep. point lead. Coach Carmody sending Floyd back down the other end. 50.2 seconds to go. Holy Cross has not shot a lot of free throws in this game. That's just their fourth free throw. Grandison hits them both. 14 point Holy Cross lead. Crusaders contesting the shot. Floyd with another rebound. Here's Green. Green to Zignorski. Holy Cross. Five gets it over half court. They can enjoy the basketball right now and just 
Let the clock run out. It appears as though Army is not going to foul. They try to jump. Grandison with it, but it does appear that the Black Knights are not going to foul. They'll try to get a steal, but not foul. There's a difference of about 10 seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Zignorski has it. Three seconds, two, Zignorski. Desperation heave, it hit the iron. It'll continue the game clock running because he hit the iron. And now Army Fox with two seconds remaining, no good. Butler the rebound, and Holy Cross with a big Patriot League win. The Crusaders take Homer. it 56 to 42. Kevin called it. We'll take a timeout and be back to wrap it all up right after this. from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. People live, listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Stirbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We haven't, we met selectmen on this show that they want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. Welcome back, everyone. Holy Cross defeating Army 56-42 here at the Heart Center. We're joined by Holy Cross head coach Bill Carmody. And coach, your thoughts on the win here tonight? Well, it's one we certainly needed. Uh, you know, we've been going through a tough stretch, and and um, I thought the guys came out with a lot of, you know, a lot of pep out there, even a little more than pep. <laughs> and um, and then the second half, as as we just mentioned uh, off air, uh, you know, we were rebounding and contesting shots, blocking a number of them. Um, and even though the, in the first, say, 12 minutes of the second half, we, I thought we were getting good shots. We kept missing like 15-footers here, and, and there was nothing to complain about. I wish I had something in a timeout. But then it started, uh, Jahiva started taking over in there, and we got some nice uh, passes for some easy ones. Talk about, with Floyd, too, the leadership of your seniors, because you have so many young players, you have so many sophomores and freshmen on the floor, but you have a good core of senior leaders. Yeah, you know, I I decided to go with Pat, uh, Matt Zignorski in the starting lineup just for a change. I mean, we got to do something. You know, I'm getting paid here. So <laughs> you got to do something to change it around a little bit and, and put a couple different guys in there. I thought Clayton did a nice job. Marlon came in and, uh, you know, he tipped the ball there. We got a fast break layup. And uh, I, I thought the activity level was good. And a few guys got involved, so it's nice. How much can this carry over, too? Obviously, each Patriot League game is, is such a battle, but how much can this carry over? You go on the road here now uh, this weekend at Lafayette. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know about the carryover, to tell you the truth. I just know that uh, we got a day off tomorrow, and then we have, uh, I think we have like eight, uh, four games in about 10 days or nine days or something. It's crazy. So um, I hope it, there is some carryover. They'll feel, they'll feel a little bit better about themselves, but... As you said, every game is, is a new day, and you got to, uh, you know, prove each game. Yeah, Coach Carmody, thanks for joining us. Best of luck the rest of the way, and best of luck this weekend at Lafayette. Okay, thanks, Kev. Thanks so much. Big win for Holy Cross here tonight as they defeat Army 56-42 at home. And, Kevin, you talked about all game long, the defense was so solid for the Crusaders, and especially in the second half. I think they did a great job, Kevin, of, of really coming after it. You know, w when we started the second half, we said it's a 20-minute ball game. And I thought that uh, Coach Carmody's kids just came out and they were imposing their defensive tenacity and their will upon Army. They created turnovers. They blocked shots. They were, we, we, you kept saying, one and done, one and done. And that's what was happening. You know, and, and I thought the same thing that Coach said. They had great shots. So it just wasn't falling early in that first first half of the second half. So uh, a great win. It's something certainly that they can build on. 
it's important to remember, there's a log jam in the middle. Four and six, four and six, three and seven. It's something that they're gonna be able to build on and look for the Crusaders to come out and do, make a push here in the playoffs coming up. Yeah, certainly a big win again for Holy Cross in Friday night. We will be back on the air here with some high school boys basketball, a top 10 matchup, Groton Dunstable and Westboro will tip it off live at seven o'clock. But for now, from the Hard Center, I'm Kevin Shea, alongside of Kevin Wells, Sean Grady, our executive producer, Dave Bolduck, and our entire Charter, entire Charter TV3 crew, saying thanks for watching so long from the Hard Center, the Crusaders with a huge win over Army West Point here tonight. <laughs>